This week we examined the wasteful taxpayer-funded subsidies given to the livestock industry. We'll also look at the efforts to tax animal products to lower consumption and help reduce global warming, revive Earth's ecosystems, and enhance public health. The onset of the Industrial Age in the early 1800s brought about major changes in human activities in areas such as manufacturing, mining, transportation, and agriculture. And over the last 50 years, especially in developed countries, consumption of animal-based foods, namely meat, fish, eggs, and dairy products, has been on the rise. Specifically, back in 1950, world meat consumption was 47 million tons, and by 2005, it had risen to an incredible 260 million tons, or over five times the 1950 amount. During that same period, the human population had only doubled. Today, animal-based foods are typically inexpensive. In fact, relative to production costs, in many cases, animal products cost even less than plant-based foods whose production cycle consumes very little of our planet's resources. How can this be? Governments worldwide provide the animal agriculture industries direct and indirect funding that enables consumers to buy their earth-destroying products at low cost. In other words, we the taxpayers, whether we approve or not, whether we are vegans or not, are paying for the enormous subsidies that sustain an industry renowned for its enslavement and cruel treatment of land and marine animals and is primarily responsible for climate change, enormous environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, oceanic dead zones, and ill health in humans. In the European Union, for example, direct subsidies are given to farmers raising a certain type of land or sea animal or producing a particular animal product, and to farmers producing animal feed. Then there are market interventions, which include financial aid for those exporting a given animal product outside the European Union, buying and storing surplus supplies of an animal product at a specific price so that the producer is guaranteed a certain profit, and marketing of animal products to increase sales. As the Nutrition Ecology International Center, an interdisciplinary scientific committee established with the purpose of investigating the impact of all stages and methods of food production and consumption, points out what's even more astonishing and incredibly illogical is that when zoonotic disease outbreaks occur, such as mad cow disease, avian influenza or swine flu, and a government heartlessly orders thousands to millions of possibly infected animals killed, livestock farmers often receive compensation from the government even though these illnesses have arisen due to intensive farming practices. In recent years, Swedish Parliament member Jens Holm has been active at the political level promoting the message of dietary change to reduce environmental devastation and climate change. In 2007, while a member of the European Parliament, he co-wrote the report The Livestock Industry and Climate, EU Makes Bad Worse. In the report, Mr. Holm and Dr. Toivo Jokala investigated how increases in meat consumption affect climate change and the role of the European Union in this process. They concluded by presenting the following specific demands that can be carried out on both the European Union and national levels. Abolish meat subsidies. Let meat bear its own environmental costs and work to make modern vegetarian food cheaper. The report also discussed the subsidies and other market intervention measures designed to benefit the livestock industry in the 2007 European Union budget, an amount totaling approximately 3.5 billion euros. In November 2010, Jens Holm and Sweden's left party submitted a bill to the Swedish parliament calling for action to reduce national meat consumption. In uh, the Swedish parliament, uh, my party, the left party, um, uh, released uh, a bill just a couple of weeks ago, which is called Reduction of Meat Consumption Bill. And uh, that consists of a few important factors. Uh, the first is that we set up a reduction target of meat consumption. We would like to reduce the Swedish consumption of meat with at least 25% by 2020. This is a very, very modest reduction, I have to acknowledge, but 
There is a lot of uh, negotiations behind this uh, target, but it is at least a reduction target. And you should bear in mind that uh, in Sweden and in the whole world, uh, meat consumption is increasing. So for the first time ever, we could have a curve where it's decreasing. Uh, we need an uh, action plan for reduced meat consumption. Uh, that action plan needs, of course, to uh, include uh, the phase-out of the subsidies to the meat industry. Uh, it could also include uh, tax uh, meat. Uh, personally, I think this is probably the most effective tool if we put a price on what pollutes. Well, we do that in a lot of other aspects, but we don't do it with meat. Uh, in Sweden, we have huge taxes on uh, cigarettes and alcohol, for instance. That is because we want people to consume less of alcohol and tobacco, and I think that's excellent. But why don't we do the same with, uh, with meat? If we do that with meat, I think it's important to use the money we raise from this meat tax in order to subsidize, uh, cut the VAT, for instance, on vegetables. So normal households, they should not be punished by such a tax. In 2007, the Dutch Bureau for Economic Policy Analysis advocated a tax on meat in the Netherlands and projected that such a tax would decrease the nation's meat consumption by two-thirds. Dr. Jan Terlu, the former Deputy Prime Minister of the Netherlands, spoke with our Supreme Master Television correspondent about his thoughts on taxing meat. Als je ziet hoe we dieren houden uitsluitend om ze op te kunnen eten, hoe een soort van non-leven we ze geven, totaal gespeend van alles wat voor, voor zo'n dier natuurlijk is, dan is dat alvast een reden om te zeggen dat moet zo niet. Bovendien is het eten van vlees, als het gaat om het energiegebruik en het, het, in het algemeen het gebruik van de aarde, is ontzaggelijk veel duurder en slechter dan het eten van granen of vruchten enzovoort. Als je een accijns op vlees zou heffen, dan zou vlees eten teruggedrongen worden. En daar ben ik een voorstander van, om de redenen die ik noemde. Ik uh, citeer over de artikel die u samen met uh, Hans Bij uh, hebt vermeld. Het was een, uh, uh, vlees is geen basisbehoefte, maar het verminderen van de consumptie daarvan is wel een basisbehoefte. Wat is uw argument om het in te voeren van belasting? Zou het effect hebben? Hoeveel effect het heeft, weet je natuurlijk nooit. Maar we zien dat overheden hebben accijns op alcohol, accijns op tabak. In de eerste plaats toch, om het gebruik te ontmoedigen en terug te dringen. Iets soortgelijks geldt voor vlees. Er zijn veel meer mensen in ons soort welvarende staten die te dik zijn, dan die te mager zijn. Er zijn veel meer mensen die ziek worden door obesitas... Door te veel en te zwaar en te vet eten en te veel eiwitten eten dan mensen die door gebrek mager zijn. Dus is alle reden om dat er flink onder de loep te nemen. En als je nou vaststelt dat het eten van veel vlees beslist niet gezond, waarom zou je dan niet datzelfde middel wat je gebruikt voor alcohol en, en tabak, om het te ontmoedigen? Dus ik vind een accijns op vlees, dat kan best. En bovendien in de Europese regelgeving mag je van alles niet, maar je mag wel als land accijns heffen. Dus ik ben ervoor dat we dat doen. Hans Bai, director of Pigs in Peril and Animals and Rights, and a lawyer from the Netherlands, now discusses the artificially low prices for animal products. Over het algemeen hebben de dieren een slecht leven. Het kost een hoop water, het kost een hoop ruimte. Mensen eten veel te veel vlees. Dat kun je verminderen door vlees duurder te maken. Vlees is veel te goedkoop. Dus als je kijkt bijvoorbeeld naar kippenvlees, dat is sinds 1960 zeven keer zo goedkoop geworden. En varkensvlees is 2,5 keer zo goedkoop geworden. Terwijl wij zelf dus sinds 1960 veel rijker zijn geworden. Dus vlees kost ten opzichte van vroeger echt bespottelijk weinig. Het voordeel van accijns is dat Nederland het eenzijdig kan heffen, dus je bent niet afhankelijk van de EU. Het voordeel is dat het heel goed te controleren is, het is een eenvoudige manier om te, om te heffen. En als je bijvoorbeeld een euro per kilo doet, dan hebben wij uitgerekend, dan levert dat anderhalf miljard per jaar op. Vanuit de EU wordt heel veel subsidie gegeven voor, voor het maken van reclame. Dus wat ze eigenlijk promoten is weer meer vlees consu consumeren. 
Terwijl we net hebben gezien dat het slecht is voor het milieu, slecht voor de dieren en de mensen veel te veel vlees eten. Dus het is een absurd weggegooid geld. To recap, when calculating the bill for animal products, the tab is long. Earth's gifts of sweet water, fertile soil and pure air are utterly befouled. Animals are systematically exploited and abused. Climate change is accelerated as producing and consuming animal foods is the largest source of human-induced greenhouse gas emissions on the planet. And healthcare costs continually rise from people eating artery-clogging meat, dairy and eggs. To save our planet in this critical hour, not only must all governments remove subsidies and economic incentives promoting animal products, those funds should be redirected to encourage eco-friendly occupations such as organic vegan farming. In turn, there will be a rise in demand for plant-based foods, creating jobs in other food sectors that are truly kind to our earth and animal co-inhabitants.